Hello, Divination, and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to design a geometrical grid layout in Divi. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, there's a few things that you need to have in place. So first of all, you need to have Divi installed and you also need to have this hexagon image. So you can either create it in Photoshop or any other similar program. Or to make it even easier, you can just drag this on your desktop and use this as your main image. So I've gone ahead and dragged this image onto my desktop. And by the way, if you want the link to the post, I will add that in the description below. Right, so what I'm gonna do now is to add that image into my media library. So I'm just gonna come over here to my library and then I'm gonna click on add new. And then here I'm gonna select the file and then navigate on my desktop and find that image. And the image is right here all the way at the top. So I'm gonna double click on it. So here it is in my library. So now that that's done, the next thing we need to do now is to create a brand new page. So I'm gonna come over here to my pages and then I'm gonna click on add new. So I'm gonna give it a name and then just publish this for now. Right, so let's start designing our section. So I'm gonna come over here to use the Divi Builder and we're gonna go straight into the Visual Builder. So we wanna click on Build from Scratch and we need uh, three columns, so I'm gonna select here. So let's just close this for now. Okay, so the first thing we need to do here is to add a gradient background, so let's do that. So I'm gonna come over here to Section Settings, click on Background, and we need the second tab, so I'm gonna click here and then click this plus button. Now it's time to add our colors. So if you want to use the same colors as I'm using in this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the description below. So I'm going to click here to select my color and then I'm going to paste my first color, just like that. And then here I'm going to click on my second color. Now this time this color needs to have transparency. So I'm just going to drag that slider down as I've just done. And then I'm going to paste the value between these brackets. So I'm just going to get rid of this and then paste, okay? So that's how the colors need to be. So for now, let's go ahead and save. And this time we need to customize our row settings. So I'm gonna click here on the row settings. So we need to make sure we use custom width. So I'm gonna click here on design, sizing. And for use custom width, I'm gonna say yes. And then let's change the unit here from pixels to percentage. And for the percentage, we need this all the way up to 100%. And then over here, we want to say yes to use gutter width and set this at 2. And then finally, we want to make sure that equalize column heights is activated. Now it's time to add our padding. So you're going to come over here to spacing. And for our padding, we are going to add 0 to the top and the bottom. And then for the left and right, we're going to add 10%. Okay, so I've just activated this uh, chain here so that the 10% can be applied on both sides. So we might as well uh, make some additions here to our uh, tablet. So I'm going to click here on the tablet and just make sure that uh, on the tablet for our, padding, for our padding left and right, it's set to 0%. So let's just add 0% here and make sure it's applied to both sides. And then we're going to go ahead and save. Now the next thing we're going to do here is to add some images to our background. So I'm going to go back here into my row settings. Uh, click on background and column one background we need to add our first image so I'm gonna click here click the plus button and we're going to add the image that I uploaded earlier on of the hexa hexagon so I'm gonna select it click upload an image and now we can see that it's in place next what we need to do is to make sure that this is set to actual size and it's set to no repeat because we don't want this shape to be repeating and over here the image position needs to be centered so that's fine so after you've done this, make sure you do this for column two and column three. Okay, so now that I have my shape on uh, those three backgrounds, I'm gonna go ahead now and save. And then the next stage now is to add our blurb. So I'm gonna click on add module and select my blurb. So I'm gonna select it here. Great, so what we need to do here is uh, we need to make sure that the text is reduced because of course we're going to have, uh, we need everything to fit in that shape. So I'm gonna get rid of some of this uh, text and then the next thing I'm gonna do now is to come over here to image and icon and just make sure that I activate icon because we don't want the default image. So this is where you get to choose the icon that you need to add in that area. So I'm just gonna choose uh, this one for now. And then over here on the top, we're gonna to go to design, click on text, and then we're gonna make sure on the text orientation, this is centered for the text color. Right now it's set to dark and uh, as a result of that, we can't really read this. So 
Let's make this light. So I'm going to set this to, uh, to light. Okay, so the next thing we need to do here is to go to the sizing because as you can see, this text is overflowing. So I'm going to come over here to sizing and adjust this width. So I'm going to set this to uh, 360 pixels. Okay, that seems okay. I'm going to center this. Now it's time to add our padding. So I'm going to come over here to spacing. So for our custom padding top and bottom, let's set this to about 85 pixels. And I'm going to activate this chain because we want the same size to be on the top and also on the bottom. And then for the left and right, we need to set this at 10%. So again, I'm going to activate the chain so that my values are applied on both sides. So now we can see everything is fitting into this rectangle shape. Now, there's one more thing we need to do. We need to come over here to the icon. And the reason why we're here is because we need to adjust this icon size because right now it's a bit too big. So I'm going to click on use icon font size and we are going to reduce this to about uh, 66. Okay, that's much better. So everything fits in properly now. So now that we've added this uh, content, we can save this and then you want to copy and paste this to the other two columns. So I'm just going to do that quickly by just pressing Command C, Command V. If you're on a PC, it's Control C, Control V. And then you can always go in and then change the icon for the different items so that um, they all don't, don't look the same. Okay, so the next stage now is to create a new section, but we are going to need most of the settings that we have on the first section. So let's go ahead and clone this. So I'm just going to come over here and clone it. And over here on my row settings, I'm going to change my column structure and set it to two equal columns. And then over here, I'm just going to delete this uh, module. So now everything is in place. Now it's time to update some row settings. So I'm going to come over here into my row settings. I'm going to come over here to design sizing so this time we're going to change our gutter width and set it to three like that now it's time to add our margins so i'm going to come over here to spacing and for our margin top we're going to set this to minus 45 pixels so now we can see that this is now moved up closer to the other shapes so we might as well just uh, add this for um, the tablet as well so i'm going to click this little icon here click on the tablet tab and uh, we're going to choose, say, minus 70 for the tablet view, okay? Now we're gonna go back to our desktop and let's continue adding our settings. So the next thing we're gonna add here is the padding. So the padding needs to be set at 24% left and right. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So over here, we're gonna change this to 24%. So now we can see our shapes are closer together and we have this beautiful laid out shape. So I'm going to save for now. And uh, what we could do as well is we could go in and change these icons by just going into the module settings, image and icon, and changing this icon right here. So I'm going to go with this one, save that. Then I'm also going to come over here and click the module settings, image and icon. And I'm also going to change that to something different. And this is because we just want to have a variety of these icons. Right, so now that's done. So we need to add another section. So um, Let's go ahead and duplicate this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then on the uh, second section, what I need to do is to go into the section settings, click on background. And over here on our gradient, I'm just going to copy the gradient end and paste it over here. And what I need to do here on the bottom, I need to reverse these colors. So I'm going to go into my section settings, click on background, and then I'm just going to reverse this by adding this color over here to the bottom and then coming back over here and switching my colors. Okay, so once we've done that, now we have this beautiful gradient. Let's go ahead and save. Now it's time to update our row settings. So I'm going to click here on the columns because this time all we need is just one column, just like that. So the next thing we need to do now is in the row settings, we need to adjust our padding. So I'm going to come over here to spacing and for our padding, we are going to add 37% to the left and the right, like that. And then over here on the bottom, we need to delete that uh, module that we've just added. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that, and now it's in position. And then finally, what you want to do is to go in and change this icon. So I'm going to go into the module settings, image and icon, and I am just going to change this icon to something different. So let's go ahead now with this hard drive. Fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead now and save. Now, if you want these shapes closer together, you can always go in and play around with your padding and also adjusting the heights. But pretty much this is how you achieve 
a geometric grid layout in Divi. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time I release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.